Today we're looking at 1 Nephi chapter 2, verse 9. And when my father saw that the waters of the river emptied into the fountain of the Red Sea, he spake unto Laman, saying, Oh, that thou mightest be like unto this river, continually running into the fountain of all righteousness. Does a river empty into a fountain? Isn't it the other way around? This is a critique that many Book of Mormon naysayers have pointed out that Joseph Smith is so dumb that he got this backwards he couldn't even figure out that water comes from fountains, not goes into fountains. Um, so we're going to take a look at this and see if there's an answer. It's clearly been a problem in the history of the church. In 1981, a footnote was even added, um, clarifying that a fount or source, another word, like the Gulf of Aqaba, which empties into the Red Sea. Um, really just trying to highlight that, you know, a fountain could be any source of water uh, to that, that feeds any other body of water. Um, so, I mean, this that, that is definitely one plausible... Um, scenario and one workaround uh, for this text in the Book of Mormon. However, we've since come to understand so much more than that about this. What was a fountain to ancient Near Easterners? Today we think of a fountain, we start thinking of water fountains, drinking fountains, fountains in the mall, fountains in a pond. Um, these geyser looking things where water is f popping up, flowing up, um, and, and providing water, obviously. To the ancient Near Easterners, there was two sources of water for rivers and streams. One was the ocean, and the other was subterranean water. Even in Genesis 7-11, we see reference to these fountains of the great deep. Um, the Hebrew word that was translated into Fountains of the Great Deep was THWM. Scholars now are almost 100% confident that this was referring to subterranean water um, as the Fountains of the Great Deep. Okay, we have to understand ancient understanding of water cycles. Over here on the right, we have our understanding of a water cycle, which science tells us that uh, water circulates mostly through evaporation and precipitation. So the water goes up into the sky, forms into clouds, rains, we get runoff from mountains, it gathers in lakes and pools and creates rivers that run out into the ocean. Uh, there is some groundwater that comes down and sinks in from those lakes and can be used by plants, uh, but eventually flows out into a larger body of water or an ocean. So, the ancient Hebrew water cycle was basically the opposite. So, to the ancient Hebrew, the water came from the ground into the ocean. Then the water would flow underground in an underwater aquifer. And it would come up as fountains into and create lakes. And those lakes and rivers would feed back into the ocean, and that was the cycle. So we'd have underwater flow, go up into lakes, out to rivers, out to the ocean. So to the ancient Hebrew, the ocean was the source, was the ultimate source of water eventually that would reach a river. Instead of us thinking runoff from the mountain or, um, or rain accumulating into a lake that flows into a river um, is the source of water from the river. Their cycle had the water coming from the ocean and then would pop up into a lake. Um, the, other, the other tricky word that now based on this perception is when we see the mouth of, of a river. Uh, often we think of the mouth of a river as where the river comes from or originates. To the ancient Semitic people, the mouth of the river was where the water came in from the ocean, where the water was drank by the 
underwater aquifer. So down here on the left, we would have what they would consider to be the mouth of a river or the mouth of the water or the mouth of the fountain. So let's look at Wadi Taibalisim again. So when my father saw that the waters of the river emptied into the fountain of the Red Sea, so he's calling the whole Red Sea a fountain because the fountain is the water that runs into an underwater aquifer and then pops up into a lake and then runs out on a river back into the fountain. So in an ancient, if we read this with an ancient understanding of water cycles, this makes 100% sense and would be the only real way to write this. Um, we didn't understand ancient water cycles until 118 years after the Book of Mormon was published. That's 1948. There's no way Joseph Smith would have had this understanding or been able to write this in such a perfect way with ancient understanding of water cycles. <laughs>